I do. The news is also live on Kazmi 107.1 FM and across the world at 3news.com. On Facebook, we're streaming live on 3FM 927. Coming up in the next one and a half hours. Leading member of Democracy Hub, Oliver Bakavomawo and another taken to police hospital for medical treatment following complaints of ill health. Also coming up, a lawyers for reoccupied Jilobi House, protesters petition commission on human rights and administrative justice charge to investigate alleged human rights abuses meted out by Ghana Police Service. later on the program president at Kofuado tells international community that rule of law has been enhanced in Ghana despite recent accusations of a state-sponsored abuse of power. And let us not forget the strides we have made in enhancing the rule of law and governance through reforms in the judicial system, strengthening our democratic institutions and promoting transparency. Ghana continues to be a beacon of good governance in Africa. bring you a story about the opposition NDC writing to the Electoral Commission demanding response to its petition for the audit of the voters register. Stay with us for all the details plus business and sports. But for now, Safwa Boahine is here with a summary of the news. Safwa, what do you have? Thank you, Beatrice, and welcome to the new summary segment. Acting Director of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, Professor Yao Ose Akinibuama, has told the government to ban all forms of small-scale mining activities as part of an effort to restore the water bodies and the forests. He says the water bodies will recover once there are no activities of Galamse in them for quite some time. The Director of the Nature and Development Foundation, Mustafa Seydu, has called for the abolishment of the Environmental Protection Mining in Forest Res Reserves Regulation 2022 LI242462, which permits mining in forest reserves. The foundation describes the law as a bad law because it flouts all the policies and agreements signed for a green environment. A group of over 35 university lecturers from the University of Ghana, GIMPA, and UPSA took the streets of Accra to rally support for the NDC. The professors, including prominent figures like Professor Nanama Brown, criticized the current new patriotic party and PP administration, claiming it has severely damaged Ghana's educational system and contributed to widespread hardship. Also, illegal small-scale miners, Galamseas, are hungry people who need jobs to keep body and soul together. Therefore, the government must provide them with alternative livelihoods to enable them to stop their nefarious practices. A former chief of defense staff, Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensa, has said. He said that using the military to fight people engaged in illegal small scale mining in Galamse is not the solution. And onto our last story, President Nanado Dankwe Gufuado has reiterated his assurance to the international community that the upcoming 2024 general elections in Ghana will be free, fair, and transparent. He said that Ghanaians will not permit the democracy of the country to be undermined. And this brings us to the end of the news summary segment. And over Beatrice. Thank you very much, Safwa Boahine. Let's bring you the details of our stories and lead campaigner of the pressure group Democracy Hub, Oliver Bakavomao, has been admitted at the police hospital in Accra. A statement released by the Ghana Police Service a while ago uh, indicates that Oliver and one other person suspect uh, Fanny Otu after complaining of ill health after their arrest were uh, taken to the police hospital for medical care. Now, the statement added that suspect Fanny Otu on Tuesday 24th uh, September 2024 complained to the police that he was indisposed as the suspect in the case uh, 
the suspects in the case were being prepared for court. The police sent him to the police hospital in Accra, where doctors at the hospital attended to him and later admitted him for further treatment. In respect of Oliver Bakavomao, the police said that suspect Oliver Bakavomao was also taken to the police hospital for medical attention, having reported sick late last night. That's Tuesday, 24 September 2024, where doctors assessed his condition and subsequently admitted him for treatment. The statement concluded that at no point in time has, uh, has the police denied the suspect any medical attention in a related development. Lawyers for Reoccupy Jubilee House protesters have petitioned the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice Shraj to investigate alleged human rights abuses meted out by the Ghana Police Service. They are asking the Commission to establish that the police's conduct during the protest was professional. Emmanuel Samani joins me in the studio with details of the petition. Emmanuel, the petition details series of alleged violations. Uh, can you run us through them? Absolutely, Beatrice. Now, this uh, petition is signed for and on behalf of Lawyers of Democracy Hub uh, by Timothy Donko. And uh, they, they list uh, quite a number of uh, petitions in here, but our focus or our, the petition of interest here include quite a number of them, starting off with uh, the denial of the protesters' food and water, which violates their rights to life guaranteed under Article 13 of the 1992 Constitution. It also says that it also undermines their human dignity as it amounts to cruel and inhumane treatments contrary to Article 15.2 of the 1992 Constitution. It also says that the arresting, spreading and concealing of the protesters without any notice to their lawyers and relatives of their whereabouts amounts to kidnapping contrary to Section 89 of the Criminal Offences Act 1960, Act 29. It also says that the smuggling of protesters to courts in Accra without adequate notice to their lawyers violates fair trial rules guaranteed under Article 19 of the Constitution and also wraps up by saying that the kidnapping of the protesters and concealing of the places they were kept amounts to administrative injustice and violates Article 23 of the Constitution. So uh, here are some of the highlights of that uh, petition to Shraj where the alleged unlawful acts and violence so uh, there you have it speech uh, but uh, what about the demands beyond what you said are you able to take us through the demands right so w with with their demands it talks about uh demanding a commencement of an immediate investigation to investigate the allegations and uh that the commission makes a finding and order that the rights and freedoms of the protesters were violated and that the police's conduct including the unlawful arrests detention detention without food violation of the rights to counsel amounts to unprofessional conduct so here are, uh, here's a summary of what the demands uh from these lawyers are Thank you very much, Emmanuel Samani, uh, bringing us uh, that petition sent by lawyers of Democracy Hub to the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. We stay a bit longer on this because the opposition at National Democratic Congress has also expressed serious concerns over the Accra Circuit Court's decision to remand 28 Democracy Hub protesters into police custody while 11 others were sent to prison. The NDC is demanding an immediate cessation of the prosecution against the protesters and their release, emphasizing that those advocating or asking for environmental Environmental accountability should be supported, not punished. In a statement signed by the National Communications Officer Sami Jemfi, the NDC condemned what uh, it called the high handedness of the Ghana Police Service and accused the government of suppressing peaceful protests. Meanwhile, the coordinator of ECO uh, Conscious Citizens, Ahula Sewa, has described the arrest and remand of democracy hard protesters as an injustice. Ahula Sewa wondered why protesters who were demanding for preservation of the country's forest reserves would be arrested whilst persons complicit in Galamse have been allowed to walk free. We think it's a travesty that demonstrators, unarmed demonstrators who were protesting against this canker, against our being poisoned, we are all being poisoned to death, against the existential threats we face, they, are rather, they have rather been incarcerated and those who are destroying Ghana with impunity are walking free. Destruction is taking place in broad daylight and they are walking free. So I think this is a travesty. And as a lawyer, 
I do feel that it's bringing our justice system into disrepute because people are asking me why were they refused bail? Were they plotting a coup? Were they murderers? Were they rapists? Why should they be denied bail? And it's very difficult to get it around my head that we could master the number of police officers we got there. And yet when people are in broad daylight on the water bodies, we can't do anything. So I think that this is wrong and all of us should add our voices to say, release these persons, release them. Anihada Awalasewa, she's coordinator of Eco Conscious Citizens, and she was speaking on uh, Midway Journals or at Midway Journals uh, uh, Forum on Galamse Fight Beyond the Talk Ward Next. Still on this, the Center for Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, has called on the government to ban all forms of small-scale mining activities as part of an effort to restore the water bodies and forest reserves. Acting Director of the Council, Professor Yao Ose Achinebuama, says the water bodies still re will recover on their own once there are no active or activities of illegal mining. Listen to him speak at that program earlier today as well. The will of the people and the will of the government is very important. I think there was something that we're saying that the, the, the commission that have been set, I think that they have the will and the power of the government. So what they need to do, they must do quickly and together with the powers that the government will give to them and the, the will of the people make together and I think that we will make a lot of progress. And for us, as an institution, one of our mandate is to look research and provide the data that can uh, give evidence and also provide solutions. So we continue doing the research, we continue providing the data, and secondly, we're also looking at technologies to help resolve the situation. But I think it cannot be resolved when the Galamse is still ongoing. So if it is resolved, and as we put our forces together, then the technologies that we need, the data that we need, will provide them so that we'll be able to return back to normalcy. And it is very possible to return our rivers to normalcy. And where we need to treat, we'll provide what it takes to treat to be able to restore so that our people will get the right water needed to drink. Thank you heard that the acting director general of the CSIR. We stay a bit more longer on this because the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana is also sounding the alarm bells on a looming food crisis in the country due to illegal mining. The association says all arable lands, especially in mining areas, continue to come under threat by illegal miners who on daily basis encroach on these lands, pushing farmers out. Former Executive Secretary of the Association, Dr. Charles Nyaba, says the situation is a national security crisis that ought to be tackled with all seriousness. There are many of them, because they polluted the surrounding farms, when they farm, the yields are so bad. So they voluntarily also sold their farms or partner with other people to come and do the mines, the mining, instead of continue to, 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 to mine and find alternative jobs. So it means on few years to come, all those mining areas, we are not going to have any agriculture activities taking place. People are talking about reclaiming the, the, the lands. To be very honest with you, that reclamation project is not working. Even if they reclaim all those lands, it will take several years before those lands will become fertile for any agriculture activities. When we come to the forest vegetation, almost we lost all our natural forest vegetation. The recent climate change that we have experienced, which people are talking of grass pelt, which destroyed almost about 60% uh, of farms in northern Ghana, Bono region, and part of the forest area, can partly be attributed to the way we have destroyed our forest lands for Galamse activities. So in terms of impact of Galamse, on our food security is something that we cannot be measured. But the impact, at least for now, uh, there are many who think that we are exaggerating the situation. But per our projections and projections by Forestry Commission and the Ministry of Food and Agri itself, the rate at which Galamse activities is taking place across the country 
if this race will continue in the next 10 years, I can bet you that all those areas, we cannot boast of any food security or supply of food to other areas. So we have two messages, and we stand by that, that there is urgent need for banning on all Galamsey activities in rivers and then in the forest vegetation. The, whether it's legal or illegal, it should be banned. And you heard that Dr. Charles Nyaba, he's former executive secretary of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. And we'll hear more from him on this program. But let's return to the court. Lord Edwasari is following the arrest and prosecution of protesters from Democracy Hub who were demonstrating against illegal mining. He joins us live on the phone. Lord, what can you report from where you are? All right, so Beatrice, um, she got a second court. 13 more persons. Uh, were to be arraigned before the courts, but 11 of them uh, made it to the courts. Two of them, including uh, convener of Take the Country Movement, Oliver Baka Bomao, was absent. Uh, another person, Fanny Otu, also absent because both of them are unwell. Now, the lead counsel for Oliver Baka Bomao, Dr. Justice Remsai, told the court that um, his client has been ill since last night and um, is presently on detention at the police hospital, the reason why he did not turn up in court today. Now, some of the other accused persons present included uh, Felicity Nelson, also another member of the Fisher Country Movement. The argument was that Felicity has, together with some uh, of them, had been in police custody for over 48 hours, which uh, they described as unlawful, and so he was praying the court to grant them bail. As I speak to you, Multiple lawyers are still um, making the bill application, arguing and giving reasons as to why this should be done. Now, the prosecution indicated that the, they vehemently opposed the bill application and actually prayed the court to commit, uh, for example, Oliver Bakavoma into prison custody. At that point, the, even the judge was um, surprised and exclaimed, oh, how? Um, because he indicated that as it stands, Bakabamawa is is on detention in the hospital, and so he's unwell. And so it's not a case that he can't be taken to prison custody. And so this is what has been happening here. I quickly want to uh, run through the charges that um, have been proffered against them. There are actually five of them, same ones that they were charged um, yesterday, the, the back from yesterday, so involved um, conspiracy to commit crime, which is unlawful assembly, another unlawful assembly, the third causing unlawful damage, uh, fourth offensive conduct, fifth assault of public officer, and sixth defacement of public notice. And there was also another accused person, he uh, has parents who are actually law enforcement officers. Uh, his father is a retired ASC and his mother is an also a retired assistant commissioner of police. So this is what has been happening. Um, we are currently waiting to see what the ruling will be um, from the judge because some lawyers are still making the case on uh, why the applications will be granted for their clients. Mm, Lord, yesterday when we spoke, uh, you said you didn't uh, really see any of the democracy hard protesters there to support uh, their fellow brothers and sisters who are being prosecuted. Uh, today, what's the situation like in terms of reactions from them? So you won't see um, protesters who have gathered around probably chanting or anything, but you would see um, family members and sympathizers. So, for example, the, father, the family of Felicity Nelson a presence in court and so that was one of the reasons that the um, lawyers made that they can post the bill because they've got the surety in the form of the family presence so basically it's been um, the family uh, sympathizers of these protesters who have been arraigned before the court thank you very much and that was uh, lord adwasari he's a uh 
court uh, legal affairs correspondent reporting live on this uh, prosecution of the democracy hard protesters uh, and their demonstration there i was telling you earlier that uh, we have a, the the peasant farmers association has been speaking about the effect of illegal mining well the association also says that it has completely lost confidence in the ability of the ministerial tax force to halt illegal mining in the country now you will recall that president akofado earlier this month announced a five-member ministerial uh, tax force or committee to collate opinions and come up with strategies to deal with illegal mining and the associated destruction of the environment. Listen to Charles Nyaba again, a former executive secretary of the association, uh, giving us his thoughts about this committee that has been formed. That there is urgent need for banning on all Galamse activities in rivers and then in the forest vegetation. The, whether it's legal or illegal, it should be banned. Now we should also allow community to take control of actually watching, serving as a, um, a, a security to the lands where we operate Galamsey. Because we have lost confidence in all the committees that government has set up to control Galamsey. Because I saw the video that was played and the commitment by our president. It didn't work. And there were several committees that were set in the past. It didn't work. So we are calling that communities should take control of their own lands. Anybody who is caught doing any form of guarantees in those communities, the community have the right to arrest them as performing or doing illegal activity. You heard that Dr. Charles Nyaba, he's a former executive secretary of the Peasant Farmers Association. We are joined by Reverend Dr. Oponi Frimpon, former general secretary of the Christian Council. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Which is, uh, good evening. And let me say good evening to your cherished viewer. It seems you are at a point where we need everybody or all hands on deck to deal with this illegal mining issue. I'm sure you've heard the discussions there, really, from where you sit, what should be the way forward? Yes, Beatrice. Uh, we are aware of the recent uh, interministerial uh, uh, team the president uh, has put up. I would have wished it to have been a non-partisan committee pulling from uh, almost all the political parties and others without uh, this partisan party thing. And even now, the integrity of that ministerial committee has been has been tainted. You listen to some ministers of state public statement. Uh, you have some of them say, as for mining, we won't stop. Some of them are saying we get it 40% of what? And therefore, you hear some of them say, if, we, if it has not so been galamse or mining, whatever, uh, the dollar CD uh, rate maybe would have gone beyond 20. You, you realize that there's no commitment, political will, from government. So you ask yourself, this ministerial, interministerial, uh, uh, what is coming out of it? And for me, I also teach at KUSC. I'm a member of UTAC. I pray and hope that the, the roadmap that Labor Union, Ghana Medical Association, all of us have put together to go ahead. I pray and hope that UTAC should not change anything. And again, now we can have private uh, uh, bills Individual, uh, private bills going to parliament. This LI2462 must be revoked. And I pray and hope, I know some people have made uh, the, the initiative and because of the legal holiday break. Uh, yes. But I, I pray and hope parliament, both MPP and NDC, uh, will come together and and work, uh, uh, have something to do with this LI. It's not serving our national interest. It, it has worsened things for us. We have heard some of the names, people who are benefiting from this LI-242 party uh, members. We've heard names like Wintumi and others. And, and that must be revoked for all these people to move out from our forest reserve. And Beatrice, for me, uh, you see, the Archbishop of Country put some team together to visit uh, mining sites all over the world. My team, we went to South Africa and Peru. In Peru, we found Archbishop of a Roman Catholic Church who led uh, uh, people, the communities, to ban uh, uh, these mining businesses when they find them to be responsible. I pray and hope that all the civil society groups, pastors who have been to the 
mining ties to prayer. We must go beyond that. This is the time we must move into the communities, mobilize uh, uh, the people in the community because the people who are doing this are armed. They need help. Now we need pastors who must identify with them that we are here with you. University professors, Ghana Medical Association, that we know the harm, the metals you are drinking, and we want this to stop. If they want to kill us, they should kill all of us. Mm, so At least recently, we find some young people who confronted armed uh, uh, illegal miners, and they were able to see their guns from them, arrested them, and handed them over to the police. If we leave this with this uh, political people, uh, we may not go far. And this is one more thing. They, we keep hearing from MPP that, oh, when we tried to stop it, NDC went around into the mining community, and they, we lost all of them. MPP should know that even though they lost uh, uh, mining communities, they won the general election. And NDC, with, yes, a mining community, lost. MPP should not do anything that will suggest that they want to win the mining communities and lose the 2024 general election. I hear you draw examples from other countries, and you just mentioned where you went to that in South Africa. And then you're also supporting uh, revoking that LI uh, uh, 2462, I believe, uh, which allows uh, mining in, in forest reserves. But again, I, I also uh, hear you talk about the fact that uh, perhaps your problem with this committee is that it, it has political individuals on it. There are those who are on arguing that we don't even need any committee at all. This is not the time for you to talk and try to collate ideas or get opinions. Just go and act because you know uh, what the problem is and you should know how to deal with it. You are right, Beatrice. I mean, uh, I was a member of the media coalition for against Galamsey. I was a member right from its beginning and 2017 when we were having series of meetings with the then Minister of Land, uh, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Peter Amewu. I mean, uh, th we got a lot of encouragement from the President. We didn't have any interministerial thing, but the Minister was very firm on the ground. Your people are doing it. We have party chairman, uh, uh, media people have been to my side. They've given us report. Your own people. You send this bill to Parliament. It's been passed. But you see the impact. We see the research. Pathologists are talking. We hear kidney uh, uh, challenges, water problems. Rural women are talking. Everybody is talking. And if you want to hear us that we are in crisis, do you need even this committee meeting labor unions to discuss what? But even if that is what you do, it should have been nonpartisan. You put your own party people there, and while they are meeting others, you hear ministers of state saying that, as for this, we won't stop. This mining, we won't stop. If we stop, we we'll lose 40%. So you say, what is the credibility of, of this? Is it not a hypocritical thing uh, that they are embarking on? You, you have supervised this, and I still plead with Nanado. Years ago, you, you hear uh, uh, Achim people uh, uh, prouding themselves that they drink brim. Now they drink pure water. Achim people don't drink brim. They should stop that boasting that years ago, Achim Kwame no brim. How many were? Are they drinking brim at Enginem or Chebi? It's a shame. It's a disgrace. And, and even the few days, if the president can do something, but the approach is it, not working. It's not getting anywhere because his own people are proved to us that, that it, they are not serious. It, it, it's a hypocritical thing. It will not serve uh, uh, the national interest, the burdens Ghanaians are having, and, and we need a leader who has give us the political way. And here, in NDC and MPP, nobody should try to have a uh, political advantage because we are in election year. President Mahama must stay focused, and he and his people. It's not like Ghanaians are becoming angry with this. Let's take ad, uh, undue advantage over it. Uh, enough of, of the deception that we have had. Let's protect what is life. Now, if I vote for leaders who can do this, what, 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 what was their legacy for this country? Wickedness, hypocrisy. That's what they've given to us. If they don't want to hear that, somebody must help, uh, help them that you've left us with, with hypocrisy. You are hurting us. And, and, and we voted for you by the power you have. You have become self-serving. You are serving yourself 
You are serving your party financiers. You are not serving Ghanaian interests. Beatrice. Rev, a, a number of people are incensed equally about the arrest of these individuals who went or hit the street to protest against illegal mining in the country. As we speak, uh, 28 of them are in police custody and 11 in, in prison. I'm just wondering whether you share the same thoughts with them because there are those who also think that the protesters uh, should have also known their responsibilities on the road. Yes, we, we are building a democratic uh, culture and uh, uh, we must also be law-abiding. I was not very much enthused when I saw one of them seizing uh, the car key of, of a police vehicle. But he eventually so, gave it to them. It was Oliver Bakabamo. Yes. Yes, yes, but I was not enthused about that. But the real anger should not be towards the, the protesters. The real anger of our security agencies and this government must be towards those who are destroying our forests and our, our water bodies. Recently, a whole minister, regional minister, uh, on, on some of your sister stations said that he led security people to mining sites and he saw the, how heavily they were armed, um, and, and they returned without being able to make any, any, any uh, convincing, any serious impact. Now, if this is the challenge, then what these young people did, uh, was how was the percentage of it, you know, that if even they've made some efforts, my position is Ghana Police Service, direct your anger and, and your bullets to those who are destroying and cobra of pain, gains to a prayer. That is where we must see you. Go to the ground and keep them out. So but you just mentioned you just mm, you just mentioned the Oliver Bakavamo and the key issue. So the main argument is that uh, these are not offences that you should uh, uh, send people to the prison for for about two weeks and deny them bail over when you've got the real people who are involved walking free. Uh, we are into uh, law. You are raising questions about the law. I will wait. Some lawyers will, will respond to the question you have raised for me. But I'm saying that, one, I was not enthused. I didn't expect the protesters to just uh, jump into a car, a, a car of the police service and run away with the car. I wasn't in, enthused. So what, that, what I'm trying to say is there might have been some excesses, but as a country, our anger now should not be young people who demonstrated whether they start on the road or they block what. The national anger, in fact, I'm a pastor, and we have something we call holy anger or righteous anger. Our pastors who have been praying on the, in the bush mindset, now we must direct our anger towards the party, uh, regional chairman and, 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 and MCEs and others who are destroying our, our in the name of LI2462. That is where our anger must be. That is where the, the IGP and his team, they are aware. In some of the towns, the illegal, irresponsible mining, are just close to police station. There are towns that people are mining just uh, some few meters to police station. They close their eyes. And, and then you come and on, on armed young people, you treat them like this. Even if uh, they cross certain red lines, which I will not encourage. But the national effort must not be on these young people, pre some of them pregnant, some of them be, be under 18 years, but they are thinking about, in future, what water will I drink? So I will want the national effort of our security agencies now to be on River Ancobra. Let your attention be on River and Cobra and the rest. We'll have to end it here. Thank you very much, Reverend Dr. Oponi Frimpon, former General Secretary of the Christian Council. It's some 34 minutes past the hour five. This is Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Some other issues. And President Akofado says that the rule of law and governance in Ghana has, in be, has been enhanced in the, more than, in the last seven years of his leadership. This declaration comes at a time the government has been accused of using the police to abuse the rights of citizens who poured onto the streets to demand an end to illegal mining. President Akufado has been speaking on governance and democracy uh, during his final address to the United Nations General Assembly. Just listen to what he said a while ago. Digitalization has improved the lives of ordinary Ghanaians and has also laid the groundwork 
for sustainable economic growth in the digital age. And let us not forget the strides we have made in enhancing the rule of law and governance through reforms in the judicial system, strengthening our democratic institutions, and promoting transparency. Ghana continues to be a beacon of good governance in Africa. We have enacted laws and implemented policies that uphold the principles of accountability and ensure that every Ghanaian, regardless of their background, is protected by the rule of law. Madam President, it is impossible to address the challenges of today without speaking of the contradictions that exist within this global institution. Well, President Akufuado also assured that the upcoming elections will be free, fair and transparent. Madam President, as I speak today, ongoing developments in West Africa are deeply troubling. Military coups in Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso and Niger threaten the democratic process, progress we have worked so hard to achieve within the ECOMAS community. These coups are stark reminders that democracy is indeed fragile and must be continually nurtured. In Ghana, however, we will remain resolute in our commitment to democracy. As my presidency draws to a close, I want to assure this assembly that the upcoming 2024 elections in Ghana will be free, fair, and transparent. The Ghanaians have demonstrated time and again in the last three decades their strong attachment to democracy, which they will not permit to be undermined. The Electoral Commission, supported by Ghana's security services, is well equipped to ensure that the will of the Ghanaian people is respected. Ghana has long been a, a beacon of democracy in Africa, and we intend to keep it that way. The 2024 elections will be proof of our enduring adherence to the rule of law, transparency, and the principles of democratic accountability that have guided our nation in recent decades. You had uh, President Akufuado uh, speaking earlier at the United Nations General Assembly in New York in the United States of America. Uh, Sani Abdurrahman is my colleague uh, monitoring this event for us from New York. He joins us live now. Uh, Sani, can you tell us more about the President's address, really beyond what we've heard and how it was received by other heads of state? Well, the president also talked about the reforms that global leaders have been asking here at the United Nations. He was quite explosive in calling out the UN Security Council, uh, asking for their uh, questioning their relevance if they are not able to intervene in times of crisis like we are seeing in Ukraine, in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Syria, in Sudan, and the rest of the world where we are seeing some sort of agitation. So the president largely uh, touched on these areas. And of course, uh, the president used the occasion to uh, highlight achievements that his government has chalked and uh, also what the next phase of governance in Ghana would be like. So largely, the president used the occasion to uh, highlight domestic issues, highlight some of the issues on the global front, called on the global superpowers to do their bit in terms of uh, addressing climate issues and ensuring that the security of countries are not jeopardized for some sort of foreign policy gains. Uh, on the part of the rest of the delegates and diplomats who have been listening to the president, uh, he was received quite well. Uh, the president, we know, is a good speaker, has been speaking very well here at the UN. But the big question remains whether issues that he talked about on the uh, domestic uh, funds would be implemented and the issues of election and the necessary supports that the electoral commission needs to conduct a free fair election would be seen and be felt so that Ghanaians would not have their security and uh, the, jeopardized. Mm, the big question you talk about but we also understand that earlier some members of the Ghanaian community had planned to protest at the UN how did that pan out? Well, the president had two groups of visitors, one pro NDC group who were agitating, uh, protesting the what they called his bad governance, which has uh, plunged the economy into chaos, according to them. Uh, the other group were pro
Afro MPP who are here uh, in solidarity to show support to the president uh, for what they describe his telling performance uh, in office. So it was a balanced kind of uh, reaction the president got here. Uh, they are still here protesting, holding placards, calling out the EC, calling out the security services, demanding that the issue of uh, Galamse should be addressed so that the future uh, generation would not have their lives uh, compromised. We it here. Thank you very much, uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman. Uh, he's my uh, man in New York covering the 79th UN General Assembly. Thank you for uh, bringing us those details from there. Now, the University of Ghana has postponed the commencement of the 2024-2025 academic year. The postponement has been attributed to ongoing strike by some unions within the university. A statement announcing the decision from the university's registrar, however, added that special programs will proceed as scheduled. The statement also said that a new date for the commencement of the 2024-2025 academic year will be announced in due course. The Teachers and Educational Workers Union, the Senior Staff Association of Universities of Ghana and the Federation of University Senior Staff Association of Ghana, FUSAC, have been on strike over issues regarding the conditions of service for members and will bring you more as and when things unfold on this front. Some other issues and the minority in parliament says that the government and the Ghana Gas Company are attempting to sign an $800 million contract for gas processing without parliamentary approval. Ranking member of the Energy Committee of Parliament, John Ginapo, says the contract has been has the tendency to cause judgment debt and cautioned the chief executive officer of the Ghana Gas Company to desist from signing the contract. He says that he has the express instruction from the minority leader to initiate processes to call for a full-scale parliamentary inquiry. The Yape uh, Kusogu MP added that the same Ghana Gas has entered into a contract with Rockshaw for a bottling plant at $24 million when a similar plant was constructed in Tema for $14 million. He spoke a while ago to some journalists in a car. Take a listen to exactly what he said. The minority once again has become aware of attempts by the Flagstaff House to compel the chief executive of the Ghana Gas Company Limited to sign a contract for gas processing at a whopping cost of more than $800 million. The initial tender had to do with a company called Phoenix. Surprisingly and strangely, that company has metamorphosized into an SPV ostensibly to avoid parliamentary scrutiny. But more importantly, as we speak, the government of Ghana and Ghana Gas have not secured a firm commitment on the supply of raw gas for processing by this entity that they want to sign a contract with. On behalf of the minority, on behalf of the NDC, let me send a very firm and stern warning to the chief executive of the Ghana Gas Company Limited. Don't allow yourself or politicians to use you for their selfish parochial interest and gains. This contract has the tendency and high probability of causing serious judgment debt. Today, as we speak, Trafigora is going to South Africa to confiscate Ghana's assets because of a similar judgment debt worth $170 million. We cannot afford another judgment debt. $800 million is not chicken feed. It's a huge amount. We therefore call on Ghana Gas to make all the documents available to Parliament. Failure to do so, I want to assure that I have the express instruction from the minority leader to initiate processes to call for a full-scale parliamentary inquiry. But let me state this without equivocation. And I'm serious about this. The chief executive of Ghana Gas don't sign this contract. On the day of reckoning, you wouldn't have these politicians there to defend you. And you have uh, John Ginapo. He's a ranking member on the Energy Committee of Parliament. He's also a member of Parliament for uh, Yape Kusogu. 
there and uh, speaking earlier to journalists. You're still here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Don't go away. our loan facilities. For whoever you are and whatever you're doing, Bills has a product for you. No susu, no deposits. All you need is your Ghana card. Call 0302 or 0596-928-33 today and live a bill-free life. Bills Microcredit is licensed by the Bank of Ghana. Bills, financing your needs. Terms and conditions apply. Three days to election 2024. Your decision to vote matters. Make it count. Imagine a place where voices matter, where every corner, every street, every community is a platform. Bus moving through Accra, carrying conversations, questions, and the pulse of the nation. This is not just another show, it's your voice on the move. Join us as 3FM Sunrise hits the road, turning ordinary streets into platforms for extraordinary dialogue. Speak freely, listen deeply, and help shape the conversation that drives Ghana forward. Look out for the bus and tune in exclusively on 3FM 92.7, your urban lifestyle radio. And you're still here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Thank you for staying. Now, despite the appalling state of morgues in the country, mortuary workers continue to endure inhumane conditions, battling flies and exposure to various infections. In Godwin, Asidiba's latest documentary, Troubled Morgue, he uncovers unsettling truths about these neglected facilities. Watch the assignment on Thursday, September 26 at 9 p.m. for the full story. But here are excerpts of that documentary. For the umpteenth time, mortuary attendants have gone on strike to demand better conditions of service. The General Secretary of the Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana, Richard Jordan, revealed that some attendants at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital are developing serious health complications with others losing their lives. Serious. We've lost over 30 in a year. Kolebu has lost three people in this just this year. They are all dying everywhere. So many mess. So everybody is sick at the mortuary. In fact, there's nobody I can say is physically fit. If we should do a test on all of them now, 
I can tell you, is it that the person is visually going impaired? Is it that the person is actually having a problem with his waist because of the lifting of the legs? Or the person is having some kind of kidney problem or maybe some lungs problem? We are working in very unconducive environment which is not fit for purpose. Many of them have been neglected beyond you know, human you know, use. Back inside the Kolebu mortuary, Kawe, not her real name, now in her 11th year as a mortuary attendant, continues to face stigma and isolation. Yeah, Branca san. So, be someone will pass away if whether it's HIV, tuberculosis, you don't know what kind of sickness is taking this person to his early or his grave. But that's your work for you to do. So, please, the government should come to our head and listen to us. We have tried to talk to them severally, but no response. The smell in here is absolutely unbearable. You can't be able to stay around for more than a minute. Now, it is alleged that the wastewater from the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, together with its morgue, flows through its channels where it finally passes through this bigger drain which connects to the Kole Lagoon and finally settles in at the sea. This is unhealthy and poses serious health risk to the populace. And you certainly want to tune in to watch that documentary tomorrow on TV3, 9 p.m. Troubled Morgue by Godwin Asideba. And Manuel Fall is standing by with the latest in business. Don't go away. And welcome to the business segment on Hot Edition. Coming up, LPG marketers warn of imminent nationwide shortage due to inventory discrepancy at Tema Oil Refinery. We'll hear from Vice President Gabriel Kumi, and my name is Menu Afo. Stay tuned for the details. Straight up, the liquefied petroleum gas marketers association has raised concerns over a looming nationwide shortage of LPG, particularly in the Accra Tema metropolis. According to the association, bulk distributors are struggling to load the products from the Tema oil refinery due to a significant discrepancy in inventory. Over 200 metric tons of LPG are reportedly unaccounted for, crippling the supply chain and sparking fears of a widespread shortage. Gabriel Kumi is vice president of LPG Marketers Association. We directly accuse Tema Oil Refinery for the shortage that we are experiencing in this country and in Accra Tema Metropolis in particular. We call on TOR, management of TOR, as a matter of urgency to do all it can to reconcile the product put there by PWSL to ensure that the reconciliation is done so that by tomorrow morning, we expect all the BBCs to release product onto the market. Tema Oil Refinery is what 
is holding everybody, everybody in this country to ransom so long as the supply of LPG is concerned. And we are appealing to the management, to the managing director to immediately ensure that whatever losses that PWSL is experiencing is sorted out immediately so that we can have supply of LPG onto the market. That was Vice President of the LPG Marketers Association warning of imminent nationwide shortage due to inventory discrepancy at the Tema Oil Refinery. Away from that, recent data from the Ghana Statistical Service shows a significant 26.9% drop in the export value of cocoa beans in the second quarter of 2024. The export value fell to 1.15 billion cities, continuing a five-quarter decline amidst severe production challenges and rampant smuggling. Despite global cocoa prices rising due to supply shortages, Ghana has struggled to capitalize on the trend. My colleague Vismak Ausa has more in the following report. The export value of Ghana's cocoa beans has fallen sharply in the second quarter of 2024, dropping by 26.9% compared to the same period last year. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, Cocoa exports stood at 1.15 billion cities, down from 1.57 billion cities in quarter 2 of 2023. This decline marks the fifth consecutive quarter of decreasing exports, with the quarterly drop from quarter 1 to quarter 2 2024 reaching a staggering 80%, equating to a 4 billion cities reduction. The drop in export value comes at a time when Ghana's cocoa production is facing significant challenges. By June 2024, the country had produced 429,323 metric tons of cocoa, less than 55% of average output in the previous years. The poor harvests, coupled with widespread smuggling driven by low local prices, have seen a third of Ghana's cocoa output lost to trafficking rings. In a bid to stem the losses, Cocoa Board has increased the farm gate price by 45% for the 2024-2025 season from 2,070 cities to 3,000 cities per 64 kilogram bag, making it higher than Cote d'Ivoire's current rate. However, the impact of this price adjustment remains uncertain as the region awaits Cote d'Ivoire's new pricing for the upcoming season. That was a three business news desk report on Ghana's cocoa export value declining by 26.9% amidst production shortfalls and smuggling challenges. And now, Ghana has emerged as a major player in the digital banking landscape of sub Saharan Africa, according to a new report by Fitch Solutions. The country's digital bank account ownership, including mobile money services, has surged by over 40% between 2011 and 2022, reaching a penetration rate of just over 60 percent the following news desk report has details the fitch report navigating the digital banking landscape in sub-saharan africa highlighted the pivotal role of digital banking in driving economic development in the region with limited access to traditional banking services hindering broader economic participation the advancement of digital banking is crucial for financial inclusion Fitch Solutions projected that Sub-Saharan Africa's banking assets would constitute 53% of the region's gross domestic product by 2024, significantly lower than the emerging market's average of 84.8%. The rise of digital banking is seen as a catalyst for economic growth, driven by factors such as widespread mobile phone usage, improved internet connectivity, and increasing regulatory support. While this growth is commendable, Fitch cautions that Ghana's digital banking penetration remains relatively low compared to global standards. Mauritius leads the region with a remarkable 90% growth in digital account ownership followed by South Africa and Kenya. As digital banking continues to evolve, it is expected to yield substantial benefits for households, businesses and the broader economy in sub-Saharan Africa. However, Challenges such as digital literacy, infrastructure gaps, and cybersecurity threats remain to be addressed to ensure the sustainable growth and inclusivity of digital financial services in the region.
That was a three business news desk report. Before we go, the city's short term outlook is promising as market sentiments are expected to improve in the coming weeks. This is a result of the expected $250 million facility from the World Bank and the Ghana Energy Sector Recovery Program to bolster the current energy sector challenges. The facility is intended to help reduce the energy sector debts and maintain consistent energy supply across the country, promoting economic growth. Analysts believe the fund will improve. Ghana's foreign reserves and boost foreign exchange liquidity. Last week, the local currency continued to depreciate against the dollar and the pound, although at a slower, play, slower pace as demand pressures appeared to be easing. Well, that's it for the business segments on Hot Edition. For more stories, can you log on to our website? It's www.3news.com. My name is Menu. Afo, stay tuned. Kelvin is on standby with the sports news. It's time for sports here on Hot Edition. My name is Kelvin Owusu and so let's start from the National Sports Authority and they met the Parliamentary Select Committee on Sports Culture led by uh, Honorable Kobna Mensah Woyome this afternoon and in attendance was Mr. Seth Pamun and that is the NSA boss and in a significant policy shift, Ghana's National Sports Authority has announced that the country's sports stadiums will now be prioritized primarily for sporting events. This decision comes after a period of declining stadium conditions that led to international embarrassment for the nation. The Cape Coast and Accra Sports Stadiums are ready and it can be assured to host any of Ghana's continental matches according to NSA Boss Set Pound. Oh, you knew about Marseille, but you didn't come back to look at Cape Coast. You didn't come back to look at Accra Sports Stadium. You didn't come back to look at the base of Ghana Sports Stadium. You didn't come back to look at Tamale Sports Stadium. So we are putting to you that we have alternative pitches in Ghana which are ready. The last time you came and inspected, you said that we needed to fix A, B, C, D. We have done that. Kipos is ready, Accra is ready. Send your men to come and have a look at it. This is where we are at now. So we are waiting for them to come. And I can assure you that if they come, the game will be played in Ghana. Kipos has been recovered. And there was a test trial yeah. on, on Kipos where we hosted the AFCON uh, women Championship. Yeah, uh, I mean, in, in the African Games too, we piloted it and the competition was, was held. But for the category three, they have to come back and have an inspection, which we have communicated to them that the pitch you knew uh, three years ago is different as of now. Come and have a look at it and you certify it for us to use for our game in Ghana. So that is the National Sports Authority board chairman Seth Pound. Now in attendance was former captain of the Black Star Steven Apia and he has advised on how Ghana can have hopes of better performances and this can only happen when there is common goal for all the playing body. For the past five years we are struggling. We are not seeing things like that. So I think it's not only the captain. You can be a captain and you, you can be a good captain but it doesn't mean that you can win matches. But when you have your colleagues that, that they are hailing the same goal, I think that that's where you can make it. Because my time I was so lucky that I have players that they are hailing for the same goal. We have to qualify for the World Cup. We have to do better. And I think that luckily it happens. So it's not only you. It's about the people you are working with. If they have the same goal as you, it works. That is from Stephen Appiah. Now he highlighted that the mega wages being offered to players in the Ghana Premier League has led to the widespread departure of talent to other African nations in search of better opportunities. He argues that this mass exodus has resulted in a scarcity of high caliber local players available for selection into the Black Stars, a situation that contrasts with previous years. 
Yes, I think we, we have to give the local players, we have to give them the chance, the confidence to play for the national team. So in our time, maybe there are certain players that looks like, looks as if they are key players in the team. We were not key players. We have players like we we have Thero and the rest who were pushing us. So we we have to make sure that we are not going to allow them to take our positions. We have the striker who won the goal king in Ghana Premier League because he didn't get a chance. Now he's playing for Togo. So we have to we have to give our boys. We have to give them the chance. And because today our league is not attractive, that's why they are running and going to other other countries. Why? Because some of the boys are earning three hundred cities. They are earning five hundred cities. And at times they have to go beyond five months. They have children, they have to take care of home, they have to pay their bills. So somebody will come and say, okay, I'll give you eight hundred dollars. They will put that's why today we even open a free game, cut up against Accra Sofo empty stadium. So we have to try and look at those things. That we do. Well, the former captain of the senior national team, Steven Appiah, now let's move on to some other stories where Yusi Basigi has been unveiled by uh, Tanzanian uh, side uh, Simba Queens. The women's football club are expecting him to upgrade their performances on the continent continental stage as he continues to firm up their dominance on the local scene. Well, a management member of Azakes ladies, Ohene Bampo Brenya, deems the exit of their coach as a huge blow. Uh, so we don't know how to take this, uh, even though we are extremely happy for him. Just like a father, uh, you wish your daughter has a good man to marry, but when she's finally leaving, there's some level of sadness. That's, that's how we feel now. But for us, we are extremely happy for him. We appreciate the work he's done for us. The history of his cannot re- be written without him. At this point, we can only wish him the very best. Hopefully, he gets, you know, Simba stars or Simba queens to the level he, he's taken as his ladies to. Um, plans are under which announce a new head coach uh, don't forget the season will be starting pretty soon um so plans are underway to to replace him but from the management from the president and the playing board we wish coach Basigi the very best of luck so that is it there from Hazakas ladies they have Kuyusi Basigi joining uh, that is Tanzanian giant Simba Quint now uh, moving away from that let's get into some international stories and Wojciech Chesney is set to sensationally come out of retirement and sign with FC Barcelona as cover for the injured Mark andre Testegen. now the former Arsenal shortstopper announced his retirement from football at the age of 34 last month however the ex-Juventus ties set to reverse that decision just a few weeks later with Fabrizio Romano stating he will sign a one-year deal with a Catalan outfit. This comes on the back of Barca's first choice goalkeeper Testegen rupturing his patella tendon during his side's win over Viero at the weekend. The 32-year-old had a successful surgery on his knee uh, on Monday but is yet unknown how long the German international will be out for. Barca sitting top of La Liga finding a quality replacement is key and they may do that with veteran Chesney who is going to compete with Iñaki Peña for a position in the number one sport. Now let's get into Real Madrid and they are set to host Atletico Madrid in a league match on Sunday. But they are going to do that without forward Kylian Mbappe who is facing a spell on the sidelines due to a thigh injury. The France international who remains a PS uh, Paris Saint-Germain uh, who was part of the Paris Saint-Germain team that uh, was looking forward to more trophies joined Real Madrid and has scored six goals including uh, the second goal that ensured a 3-2 victory uh, last weekend. Prior to his injury Mbappe had scored eight goals in nine appearances in our competition but he is expected to miss out games including this weekend's game against atletico madrid now some matches are coming up in the uefa europa league two games currently ongoing 64 minutes played az alkmaar drawing two all against elsborg but a glint leading fc porto by three goals to one surprising result later at 7 p.m underlecht against faring virus dynamo kiev against lazio there is michelin against offenham galatasaray against Paul Thessaloniki. there is ludogretz rasgard against slavia prague there is nice against Real Sociedad and Manchester United against FC20. Eric Tanag is not happy with a congested fixture schedule for his team. There are too many games, it's clear. Uh, too many competitions uh, for the top players. Uh, they are overloaded. 
and this is not good for football in the end of the day it's maybe good for commercial but uh, there is uh, there is a limit a players get I- getting injured it's almost unaffordable the players getting injured because of the overload from so many games but in in all the games i already i did this on saturday but is, it, is, it, is that going to have to be the case going forward though as well uh, we need we need a squad with more than 11 uh, to, to line up we need more players and and then from game to game um, we will we will pick a team so but you can't address it this is uh, the the best 11 uh, in this moment um, and we will see and of course um, form is part of it uh, tactic of course is also part of it but definitely uh, the, the management of the load of the players is definitely part of it Eric Ten Hag clearly very much worried. Ongoing in the Spanish La Liga, Girona are currently drawing goalless against Rayo Vallecano. But this evening at 7 p.m., Barcelona play against Hetafi at home in the EFL Cup. Arsenal facing Bolton Wanderers and the Liverpool will be playing against West Ham United. Kudus hasn't had a good start. Hopefully, this will give him some good riddance. Angela Lopetegui, some rest. That'll be all for sports here on Hot Edition. There's more sports news on 3news.com forward slash uh, sports and also three sports GH across all the socials. My name is Kelvin Oswans. The Hot Edition continues. Comprehensive election coverage. Top notch presenters and well versed analysts. Dedicated reporters and correspondents in every nook and cranny across the country. All the action, every incident reported, all the big stories covered, all facts cross checked, every figure verified. Monitored and accounted for. The numbers tallied, analyzed, and interpreted. We have invested time and energy in order to bring you a comprehensive elections coverage. The whole world will be watching us on TV, online, and radio. Election Command Center. Facts, analysis, results. Radio Development Show Host of the Year, 2016-2017. And the winner is John Hughes. Check. Hi, my name is Johnny Hughes, your community rights advocate, and I'm still on the quest to bring smiles into your communities with Community Connect on 3FM 92.7. Join me this and every Friday morning at 9 a.m. right here on 3FM, and together we will solve the problems bothering your communities. I know your program is a program that always gets a result. Myself, I'm a witness to that. What can we do to help your community to Today, in terms of education, health, sanitation, security, and all the issues in between from your community's perspective. Tune in to Community Connect every Friday morning at 9 a.m. as we get interactive live on radio and on Twitter at 3FM927 and on Facebook at 3FM92.7. Community Connect, helping solve your community problems. And you're still here on Hot Traditional 3 FM 92.7. Thank you very much, Kelvin Owusu and Sam, for bringing us the latest in sports. And we return to the court right here in Accra. There's a breaking news coming in that the court has adjourned uh, regarding the case involving the protesters from Democracy Hub. Lord Edouard is still in court for us monitoring events. He joins us live on the line. Lord, just uh, bring us the latest. All right, so Beatrice, the Accra Circuit Court has adjourned the 
hearing involving the protesters of the democracy have um, demonstrations to tomorrow afternoon, 1.30, to be precise. Now, this is because the court will allow the prosecution to respond to the bill application made by the um, various lawyers of the, pro uh, the protesters, and then the court will give its ruling as to whether it will um, acknowledge or give the bill that grants the bill that the application being given or being requested by the lawyers of the protesters or deny deny saying and so that's what we have right now you recall that this case actually started around 3 p.m we've been here since morning because we we're expecting them to come through but then they eventually came after two and then the hearing started at three but the difference with today's case is that unlike yesterday when um, we just had about two lawyers representing all 12 of them. Today we had um, just about two protesters to about a lawyer. And so they all took turns to give arguments or give reasons why they felt that their clients should be granted bill. Apart from um, Oliver Bakabomawa and then two others who were absent, um, all 11 of them were present. And so the bill application was made. When, when we come tomorrow, the court will decide on whether Thank you very much, Lord Edwasra, reporting live from the court on what's happening. Presidential elections that appears to be another internal storm. We're comprising a caucus from the region's call on the EC to annul the so called National Congress elections on the 7th of September 2024 and cause the party PNC to rerun a credible National Congress free, fair, and open to all party delegates. In response to the disqualification of Thomas Moon Jr., the parliamentary candidate for the Wajagbawe constituency blamed the party's exclusion on the contested election which he described as skewed. Who will emerge from such an unfair and fraudulent election, claiming victory and will be taken seriously? The fact that the PNC has been disqualified from contesting the presidential race is a result of the fraudulent elections. The so-called winners of this biased election were determined to push through for a victory by fair and foul means. And when they were successful in their evil designs, they were popping champagne, <laughs> thinking that they had arrived. We do not blame the YC for disqualifying the PNC. The blame lies at the door of those who pushed and devised an evil plan and claim a stolen verdict. He expressed confidence that the party would hold fresh elections and ultimately secure a spot on the ballot despite the electoral commission having already conducted the ballot draw for the various candidates. The ball is in the EC's court. We are ever ready to contest anybody contestable. If uh, uh, Honorable Apasera is to be here and Benamuda is to be here, we can even have the vote today if the EC is around. We can use two weeks to be on the ballot paper, if the EC wants us to do so. Just two weeks, because this Congress can be organized within one week time. And within another week, we can be on the ballot. It all depends with the EC. The mistake didn't come from us, but the mistake came from the EC. The faction also stated that they refused to recognize the party executives elected on September 7, further deepening the internal division. Noble Crosby and Unfart, that report. Now a group of over 35 university lecturers from the University of Ghana, Gimpa and UPSA took to the streets of Accra to rally support for the opposition in D.C. The professors, including prominent figures like Professor Nana Ama Brown, criticized the current uh, government under the new Patriotic Party, claiming that it has severely damaged Ghana's educational system and contributed to widespread hardship. I'm joined on the phone now by uh, one of the lecturers actively campaigning for the NDC, Professor Nanama Brown. Good evening to you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us on Hot Edition. Good evening. Mm, your rationale for the campaign, you said, is because of the poor economic policies, uh, especially in the area of education. Uh, this move, many uh, will agree, is unprecedented, but it has implications, you know. Yes. Yeah. The implications we expect are the positive ones to get the message of the NDC to the ordinary people and to get other lecturers to step out and campaign with us. 
What, what would you say to those who think that you're hi highly thinking that the position may come to power and therefore you want to position yourself well just so you can get positions when the NDC or if the NDC gets elected? Uh, well, they can say whatever they, they say, but uh, party positions uh, are the sole uh, decision of the, the president. And so for us, our main goal is for the party to win, for the NDC to win. Our main goal is for a change. We want the NDC to win power, MPP to get out of power. We are not comfortable any longer as Ghanaians. We are Ghanaians, first of all, before we are electorate. And we feel the pain of every Ghanaian. We feel the hardship of every Ghanaian. So stepping out on the streets to campaign doesn't mean we are positioning ourselves for position. But whatever the case may be, we will have to win power first. So our campaign is for the NDC to win and to see John Dramani Mahama become president again. Have you heard any response from the NDC that you're campaigning for so far? The members of the NDC? Yes. Yes, they have seen a couple of videos on social media and in the traditional media as well. Wendy here. thank you. Nanama Brown, uh, she's a lecturer uh, and one of the lecturers uh, campaigning. They actually hit the street today to campaign for the flag bearer of the position in D.C., John Mahama, uh, hoping that he wins this year's general election and still staying with the party. And the NDC has actually written a letter to the Electoral Commission as a follow-up to the request to have a forensic audit of the voters' register. I'll just read that briefly to you. It says, we bring you greetings from the National Democratic Congress and trust that this letter finds you well. We refer to our petition of 17 September 2024 in which we, among other things, requested for a forensic audit of the voters register and its IT system. This follows uh, this follow-up letter has become necessary due to the fact that the Commission has not had the curtsy to reply our petition to date. Neither has the Commission officially responded to the serious issues we have raised in the petition and the request for a forensic audit thereof. We are, by this letter, reminding the Commission of the critical importance of a credible voter's request at register to the impending December 7 polls, hence the need for an audit of the electoral roll and its IT system to identify the vulnerabilities therein and effectively address the numerous anomalies we have put before you. We respectfully uh, await your swift response and or action on this urgent matter of considerable public interest. It is our hope that your response will be in accordance with your declared motto, transparency, fairness and integrity. And that was signed by Fifi Kwete, General Secretary of the NDC. Still on the same matter, the Movement for Change, uh, led by Alan Kwejo Tremanting, has also written a two-paged document to the Electoral Commission. I'll just read portions of that to you. And it says, Dear Electoral Commissioner, I write for and on behalf of Honorable uh, Alan Tremanting, independent presidential candidate, founder and leader of the Movement for Change and Aligned for Revolutionary Change. Uh, the M4C and the ARC have noted with deep concern report of compromised data in respect of the current voters register that the electoral commission is preparing for the 2024 general election and it says that the ec has accepted the authenticity of report or poor data control and has indicated that uh, the Commission is currently conducting an internal exercise to rectify the anomalies and the reference. In spite of the Commission's efforts, the manner and process of remedial action remains in serious public contention. Therefore, give that given that the integrity of the impending elections primarily rests on the functional quality of the voters' register, M4C proposes... Uh, the following measures in support of securing universal acceptability of the voters' register. I'll just read one of it to you. The establishment of a high-level technical working group 
uh, chaired by the EC with representatives of candidates uh, cleared to contest the general elections and the consultant responsible for e for the EC data management. You get more of uh, the details from this statement from Alan Tremonting and his group on our website srinews.com. And that's it for Campaign Trail and for Hot Edition here on 3FM 92.7. My name is Beatrice Sedu. Thank you very much for joining us today. Log on to 3news.com for more news. Have a good evening and enjoy the rest of our programs.